On average, a single human lifetime consumes nearly 4,400 pounds of paper. We pull it out, use it, and throw it away in less than three seconds. Yet behind those three seconds of convenience lies an enormous cost. Tens of billions of tons of wood sacrificed and pushed through one of the most brutal transformation journeys on Earth. Deep within forests, tree trunks are cut down, stripped of their bark, crushed into fragments, and cooked at high temperatures to separate the fibers. That raw material then travels through massive mechanical systems, stretching hundreds of yards in length, before finally being formed into thin, lightweight sheets of tissue paper, manufactured with precision down to fractions of an inch that we use every single day. In today's video, join the factor and as we go deep inside modern manufacturing plants to uncover the complete industrial journey behind how a single sheet of tissue paper is made. Paper tissues only began to appear widely in the early 20th century, initially seen as a convenient substitute for cloth towels in everyday life. But in just a few short decades, this seemingly small product has risen to become one of the most heavily consumed paper products on the planet, with hundreds of billions of sheets used every year for dining and daily household activities alone. That massive demand forces modern tissue factories to operate continuously, 24 hours a day, with almost no concept of stopping. Today, the global tissue paper market has reached nearly 100 billion US dollars, with an annual output of around 50 million short tons. That figure is so enormous that it is equivalent to nearly five times the combined body weight of the entire world's population. It is a scale of production that reveals how deeply tissue paper has become embedded in modern life and how immense the industrial system behind this everyday product truly is. The tissue manufacturing process begins in industrial plantation forests, where fast-growing tree species such as acacia and eucalyptus are cultivated and harvested on cycles ranging from 7 to 15 years to ensure a stable and continuous supply of raw material. On average, producing one ton of paper requires roughly 15 trees. When the trees reach harvest age, each one is selected based on its trunk diameter, height, and overall growth condition, then cut down using massive harvesting machines weighing around 27.5 short tons. The cutting head clamps tightly around the trunk, and a saw blade nearly 3.3 feet long slices through the wood in just a few seconds. Immediately after, the same machine strips away the branches and cuts the trunk into uniform logs directly on site. It takes only about 40 seconds for a full-grown tree to be transformed into neatly sized sections of timber. From the forest, hundreds of trucks line up every day to transport the logs straight to the factory, marking the beginning of a production chain that operates almost without pause day and night. After being received, the logs are fed directly into the debarking machines where the entire outer bark is removed. This layer contains a high concentration of impurities and substances, such as tannins, which are not suitable for paper production. Inside the machine, the logs continuously collide with one another and with the inner walls of the drum. Through this constant impact and friction, the bark is gradually loosened and stripped away, a process that typically takes about 20 minutes of operation the removed bark is not discarded, it is collected and reused as biomass fuel, generating steam that powers parts of the very same production line. Once debarked, the clean logs exit from the other end of the machine, fall onto conveyor belts, and move straight into the cutting system. Here the wood is torn apart, chopped, and crushed by high-power rotating blade assemblies. These massive cutters transform solid, rigid logs into uniform wood chips, carefully sized to meet the strict specifications required for pulp production. After processing, the wood chips are fed directly into massive cooking vessels known as digesters. These are sealed steel cylinders engineered to withstand extreme heat and high pressure. Inside, the chips are fully submerged in a chemical solution and heated to a temperature of approximately 317 degrees Fahrenheit for several continuous hours. Under these conditions, the internal bonds that hold the wood structure together begin to break down. The lignin, which acts as the natural glue binding the fibers, is dissolved, allowing the cellulose fibers to separate from one another. 
The entire mass of wood is effectively cooked from the core outward, losing its rigid, solid form completely. By the time the cycle is complete, the material leaving the digester is no longer recognizable as wood. It has transformed into a thick, fibrous slurry of raw paper pulp, commonly referred to as brown pulp, marking the true birth of paper at the molecular level. After leaving the digester, the brown pulp is sent into a multi-stage washing system to remove residual chemicals and remaining impurities. The thick slurry is continuously diluted, mixed, and dewatered through filtration units, flushing away dissolved lignin and unwanted particles. This cycle is repeated several times to ensure the pulp reaches the required level of purity. Modern washing systems operate in closed loops. The extracted water is recovered, treated, and reused, significantly reducing water consumption while improving environmental efficiency. Once the pulp is sufficiently clean, it moves into the bleaching stage. Instead of chlorine, most facilities now rely on oxygen or hydrogen peroxide. These agents break down the remaining lignin and brighten the cellulose fibers without weakening their structure. Throughout the process, temperature, chemical concentration, and reaction time are tightly controlled to maintain consistent quality. When bleaching is complete, the transformation is clear. The pulp changes from a dark brown mass into a bright, soft, and uniform fiber suspension. This step is critical as it defines the whiteness, softness, and safety of the tissue long before it is formed into finished paper products. After being cleaned and bleached, the stream of soft white pulp is fed into large capacity mixing tanks. Here, softwood pulp is combined directly with bales of hardwood pulp inside high-power industrial mixers. The mixing blades rotate continuously, creating strong vortex flows that evenly disperse the different fiber types throughout the entire pulp mass. The blending ratio is tightly controlled and adjusted, depending on the requirements of the final product. Soft wood pulp provides bulk and a soft, cushion-like feel, while hardwood pulp adds strength and resistance to tearing. Even a slight change in this ratio can significantly alter the characteristics of the tissue. From how gentle it feels to the touch, to how well it absorbs liquid and how easily it resists breaking during use. Immediately after fiber blending, a large volume of water is added to further dilute the mixture, forming a fiber suspension with an extremely low concentration, typically only a few percent solid content. At the same time, functional chemicals are automatically dosed in precise amounts according to flow rate. These additives allow exact control over key properties, such as softness, strength, thickness, and color tone of the paper. This is the moment when the identity of the tissue is truly defined, long before it takes the form of a finished sheet. From the screening system, the purified pulp stream is pumped directly into the paper machine, where sheet formation begins. Inside the head box, the mixture of pulp, water, and functional chemicals is evenly sprayed through a narrow horizontal slot onto a moving metal forming wire traveling at a speed of about 56 miles per hour. At this stage, the material contains only around 4% solid fiber, while the remaining 96% is almost entirely water. The moment the suspension lands on the wire, gravity immediately begins pulling water downward through the mesh openings. As the water drains away, the cellulose fibers start to interlock with one another, forming the first fragile structure of a paper sheet. Within seconds, the water content drops rapidly and the sheet reaches a consistency of roughly 60% moisture, strong enough to hold together as a continuous web. This newly formed wet sheet is then transferred onto a felt belt and guided through massive press rollers. Under intense mechanical pressure, even more water is squeezed out of the paper. The moisture level falls further to around 20% a critical point where the sheet becomes structurally stable, capable of maintaining its shape, and strong enough to continue its journey smoothly through the rest of the production line. The paper web is carried onto the Yankee dryer, where it is dried by steam heat and simultaneously goes through the creeping process that creates the soft, airy structure characteristic of tissue. At extremely high operating speeds, the moisture content of the paper drops from about 95% to only around 5%, forming a thin, fully finished sheet of tissue. 
Immediately after leaving the Yankee dryer, the tissue sheet is fed into the jumbo winding system. Here, the paper is rolled into massive reels under precisely controlled tension. If the tension is too high, the sheet can stretch or tear. If it is too low, the roll may wrinkle, shift, or lose its perfect shape. That is why the entire winding process is automated, with sensors constantly adjusting speed and tension to keep every roll tight and uniform. Each jumbo roll can contain tens to hundreds of kilometers of tissue, equivalent to about 37 miles of paper compressed into a single cylinder. On large production lines, a single roll can weigh more than 20,000 pounds. These enormous reels become the semi-finished material that will later be cut, embossed, folded, and packaged into consumer products. Once a roll is completed, technicians take samples for quality control. Thickness is measured to ensure consistency. Tensile strength tests confirm the tissue will not tear easily during use. Brightness and surface uniformity are checked with optical instruments to guarantee stable color and texture. Fiber structure and biodegradability are also evaluated according to international standards such as ASTM and TAPI. Only when a roll passes all of these tests is it approved to move forward. If even a small deviation is found, the entire roll is rejected. This final inspection acts as the last safeguard, ensuring that every sheet of tissue delivered to consumers meets the required softness, strength, and reliability. From the jumbo rolls that have already passed quality standards, the paper is fed directly into the ply bonding station of the finishing line. Here, multiple rolls are unwound at the same time and guided through tension control rollers. The pulling force must remain perfectly stable because even a slight imbalance can cause wrinkles, edge distortion, or surface defects that affect the final product. From the approved jumbo rolls, the paper is fed directly into the ply bonding station. Here, several rolls are unwound at the same time under carefully controlled tension, removing wrinkles and keeping each sheet perfectly flat and aligned. The layers are then combined into one, two, or multiple plies depending on the product design. This step defines the tissue's thickness, strength, and feel. For napkins, the goal is a balance between softness and durability, so the paper stays gentle to the touch while still resisting tearing when exposed to water or oil. Depending on customer requirements, the paper passes through an embossing unit where heavy engraved rollers press precise patterns into the surface without tearing or thinning the sheet. This step not only enhances appearance, but also increases softness, bulk, and absorbency by creating tiny air pockets between the fibers. After that, the paper web continues its journey into the cutting and folding mechanism, one of the most precision-driven stages of the entire production line. Before folding can begin, the paper must be separated into exact lengths. At the same time, a transverse cutting blade moves up and down in a perfectly timed cycle, making a cut approximately every 8.5 inches. Immediately after being cut, each sheet is guided straight into the inner folding system. Here, precise mechanical arms fold every sheet in half and insert it into the fold of the next one. The system operates at a speed of about 16 folds per second, creating a continuous flowing motion that never stops. This folding method does more than stack the sheets neatly. It links them together in a specific sequence. The result is large stacks of napkins, sometimes reaching widths of up to about five feet, built with a smart structure that allows one sheet to pull the next into position automatically when removed. This is the familiar pop-up effect seen in napkin dispensers everywhere. What appears to be a simple motion to the user is actually the outcome of a highly synchronized mechanical process, transforming flat paper into one of the most convenient everyday products in the modern world. When the stream of napkins has been interfolded and its shape has fully stabilized, the entire paper mass begins to be divided into individual stacks. The large paper blocks, reaching widths of nearly five feet, are guided into the stacking station, where mechanical systems separate them into smaller stacks according to a precisely synchronized operating rhythm. Each stack is automatically counted and calibrated to contain the exact number of napkins required for each packaging specification, typically ranging from 80 to 250 sheets per bundle. After that, 
the stacks pass through the final cutting station, where a circular saw blade lowers automatically in a steady repeating cycle. At intervals of about 8 inches, the blade trims the paper, producing napkins with their final, finished dimensions, ready for packaging and distribution. At the final stage, finished napkin stacks enter the automated packaging line, where robotic arms wrap each bundle in a thin film and seal it with precise heat to protect against dust and moisture. The packages are then packed into cartons, stacked on pallets, wrapped for stability, and sent to storage, ready for global distribution. And here, the journey of a single paper napkin officially comes to an end. From carefully managed industrial plantation forests to the neatly packaged boxes on store shelves, every stage reflects the precision and sophistication of modern industrial manufacturing. If you found this journey fascinating, leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe to the channel to continue exploring more remarkable production processes from around the world.